So contaminated water can be a source of various diseases. And in this video, we are going to understand the sources of this contamination or what are the three different types of contamination. So when we talk about water contamination, we generally talk about direct infections being present in the water which enter the body through oral route by drinking of this contaminated water. Generally, the infections within this category are the viral infections, the bacterial infections, the fungi and the protozoans and the parasites. The second is the indirect cause of contamination wherein the water actually gives rise to some insects and parasites which actually enter the body through skin or through bite of an insect and actually transmit the disease. These can be majorly like the dengue fever, the malarial fever and the lymphatic filariasis. In these cases what happens is like in malaria and dengue, the insects actually grow in the water and these stagnant water they may grow fresh or stagnant water and hence when they grow they can actually bite an infected person and then bite a normal person and transmit the disease malaria and dengue the lymphatic filariasis which actually happens because of the filaria parasite being present within the water enters through the skin root then can be toxins which are present in the water these toxins can be through the fungi which are present these are called as mycotoxins or there can be various chemicals or some substances which are present like the heavy metal poisoning like the lead, arsenic and mercury. These are the three heavy metals which can be found in contaminated water and hence can cause a severe disease. Now coming back to the direct route of infection wherein there is oral ingestion of the infections. Now let us understand what are these infections. So when we call these infections we call them as viral infections which can be namely poliomyelitis also was transmitted through contaminated water then there is hepatitis A and hepatitis E then obviously we have rotavirus and polyoma virus and acute gastroenteritis virus norovirus these all rotavirus causes diarrhea in children then polyoma virus and norovirus can cause acute gastroenteritis these are viruses which can transmit through contaminated water then we have bacterial infections and bacterial infection the most common that we talk about is typhoid caused by salmonella typhi then we have cholera which is through contaminated water then we have e coli which can be transmitted then we have dysentery caused by shigella these are few waterborne bacterial infections these are the common waterborne bacterial infections then we have the fungi infections like the molds and aspergillosis which can also the fungi these grow in the contaminated or stagnant water. Then if we talk about the protozoans of the parasites we have giardiasis, amoebiasis, schistosomiasis, leptospirosis, we have entamoeba histolytica causing amoebiasis, then we have uh, hookworm infections. So these are some parasites being present in the contaminated water which can actually cause infection. So now this is like just proving my point that yes contaminated water can be a source of multiple diseases. Now how do you get rid of them? How do you evaluate the three sources and how do you tackle them? So the first source which is the direct infection can actually be targeted by boiling water. So obviously there are a lot of filtration systems available but if you just do simple one little thing that is boil your water before drinking this will solve 99.99% of the direct infection problems. So always drink water that is boiled. Obviously filtration systems are available which actually kill the bacteria and the virus, the fungi and the parasites and the protozoans. But yes, boiling is the start point. Obviously if you have an advanced filtration system then you may not need to boil the water. The second is indirect infections like the insects that grow or the filarial worm. For this you should not have stagnant water or you should have a fresh water which is basically moving. The water should not collect at one place for a long period of time. Then the third is the toxins which are present in the uh, water or the 
heavy metal poisoning like the lead arsenic mercury for this you actually need a advanced filtration system like what we say the reverse osmosis process the ro process the ro filtration system actually removes some of the heavy metals from this water and this is a good system so hence friends i hope this was a small video which made you understand how you can tackle three sources of contamination of water which is important because water is a cause of lots and lots of problems and diseases so if you like this video please do like share and subscribe with your friends and please wait for my next video thank you